So I want to discuss this more with uh, Monique Skidmore, a professor and expert on Myanmar. She joins me from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, lovely to have you on the show, uh, Monique. Uh, the military never really took its hands off the levers of power. Have they been playing lip service to democracy the past few years? And now that facade is gone, what happens next? Yes, I think that's that's right. The, I've heard a lot about a democratic transition, but there never has been one. There has been a limited amount of power that was ceded to civilians, but it was always under the um, understanding that, that they didn't rock the boat, that they went along with this military constitution and with the military controlling the main ministries and 25% of the seats in parliament. And in this next parliament, Aung San Suu Kyi was contesting that and was trying to uh, changed that situation so that the constitution was changed and what we've just seen happen couldn't happen again. So we know that Aung San Suu Kyi has called for protests. Um, I believe that that came from within that guest house, although I think that's been unconfirmed. But either way, should we watch? What should we watch for, for the in the coming days? Will the people of Myanmar challenge this military dictatorship, as, 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 we'll, as we'll called it? I think there's no doubt that if Aung San Suu Kyi calls people out to the streets, we will see mass protests in multiple cities. Even late last week, we saw a gathering of monks starting to protest, warning the military regime not to retake power as they've done. So if the monks come out, the people will come out to protect them, as they have every time there's been a coup or, or anti-military um, demonstrations in the past 20 or 30 years. There was one suggestion that perhaps this was a ruse and that the military dictatorship uh, would want people to come out, would want to have a show of force to clamp down. What do you say to that thesis, perhaps? You know, I've, um, I've studied uh, multiple military coups in Myanmar and I've been there for some of them. Um, I, I just don't give the military that much credit. I don't think it's trying to engineer some uh, psychological game here. I think that it's trying to frighten people to stop the National League for Democracy trying to take more power. I think it wants to stay in control. It's not going to let power slip. And I think it will do, unfortunately, whatever it takes to hold on to power. How much does support does Aung San Suu Kyi have in the country right now? I mean, internationally, we know her reputation certainly took a hit after she showed deference to the military and their actions against the Rohingya. But what kind of leverage does she have in this situation right now? So that terrible xenophobia we saw against the Rohingya, um, which has trashed her reputation internationally, hasn't even put a slight dent in it internally. She's still the most revered uh, political figure. She is the second most revered political figure of all time, second only to her father, the head of the army, who was who started the Burmese army. So she is has incredible power and reverence, and people call her Mother Suu Kyi, and uh, they will fight uh, for her if that is what she asks. And let's talk about international pressure. How much do you expect? How much international pressure do you expect here? What is the calculus by the generals? The generals have a 2,000 kilometer border with China, and they have never been worried about the effectiveness of sanctions by other countries, by Western democracies, because it really can't bite too hard. So long as you have an open border with China, their major trading partner, they're okay. So we may see sanctions again, but they were never effective in the past, and they're unlikely to be effective now. So what is going to play out uh, in the next few days? And what do you think is, is the end game here? I think that we will see after 12 months uh, a new constitution, possibly, and we'll possibly see new elections. Uh, but if we do, I don't think we're going to see the old power showing that we've just that has been the case for the last decade, unless uh, that in the next few weeks, negotiations occur with the National League for Democracy and they agree to not to challenge the, the current status quo. I don't know that that's particularly likely. What's more likely is that after 12 months of military rule, uh, assuming it is able to successfully put down protests that occur, then we will probably see another lengthy period of pseudo-civilian rule again but it's, it's unknown whether or not it will 
release the National League for Democracy members, whether or not it will actually call for elections, or whether this is simply the resumption again of many more decades of military rule. Great to have your expertise. Thanks so much for joining us there. Monique Skidmore in Melbourne. Thank you.